Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Chaya and I am continuing my series on tips for postpartum moms. My second tip to you is to eat well. Eat regular meals. How, if you're breastfeeding, however often your baby is nursing, go ahead and eat. I mean, it depends on your metabolism, I guess, but if you're one of those people that gets hungry every time you sit down to nurse, make sure that you are eating a meal every time your baby's nursing. It doesn't mean that you have to both sit down to eat at the same time. Some people find that hard to like eat and nurse at the same time, but I'm just saying, if you notice your baby's eating every two to three hours and you get hungry every time your baby wants to breastfeed, so then make sure you're also eating every two to three hours. It doesn't have to be, again, exactly the same time. You can eat an hour before, an hour after, but just make sure you're eating frequently, okay? Eat anything, pretty much. Um, basically take everything you've ever learned about dieting and throw it out. Don't count calories, don't count carbs, don't count anything. If it's relatively healthy, eat it. If it grows, eat it. If someone else made it, eat it. Like I'm all for making your life as easy as possible. Um, like just basically if it's food and it's put in front of you, put it in your mouth. My third tip for you on the other end of the dieting spectrum is don't stress if it's not like perfectly healthy, if it's not organic or keto, paleo, gluten-free, whatever, like any of that stuff, like if that's the kind of diet that you normally stick to, um, don't stress about that in the early days. Now, if you do have a true allergy or sensitivity, obviously, please respect that. Um, but if it's just a certain way of life that you prefer to, like a lifestyle that you prefer to live, and I completely understand that, um, we, we like to eat pretty healthy, but when I have a baby, I'm like, if anyone sends us food, I'm just so grateful because yes, I want to be healthy. I want my baby to be healthy. I want all my kids to eat healthy. But the fact is, is like, I also want my kids to have a homemade meal. So if a friend is sending a meal, like I'm just so grateful regardless of whatever it is. Again, if you have true allergies or sensitivities, please respect those. But otherwise, literally just put food in your mouth. Now, I do have some guidelines I mean, not guidelines, or just some suggestions on how to eat or what to eat and not to eat when you are in those early postpartum days just to help you out. And I will share them with you now. Food tip number one is to keep processed sugar to a minimum. Again, we're not stressing about food here, but if you have an option of having a chocolate bar or a granola bar that's like full of sugar versus a meal, like if your uh, friend or family member can put like food on a plate for you, a, a soup, a salad, a chicken and rice, whatever. If you have an option and you're not having a craving for that particular unhealthy item, try to go with the healthier food versus the processed sugar. And get into that in a whole, not, whole other video. Processed sugar and newborns is like a recipe for disaster. So do whatever you can to keep like healthy options on hand at all times. Now, if you are craving sugar, hopefully you have fruit in the house and you can eat that. I'm not saying don't eat any processed sugar, but I'm saying try and keep it to a minimum because I know sometimes it's easy, like all day long, we're just like grabbing food and it's easy to just grab a, gran a granola bar. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you. I must've gone through like, I'm embarrassed. I have no idea even, but I probably went through a lot of those Costco size granola bar boxes after one of my kids was born. Um, ironically or not so ironically, if you know something about sugar, um, he was my worst baby. Like he screamed. And in retrospect, I'm like, it was probably all that sugar that I was eating and it made him really gassy and all that stuff, right? So try to keep processed sugar to a minimum. My second food tip, and this might, uh, you might not like this, <laughs> but try to cut back on caffeine. You don't want to totally cut out caffeine entirely abruptly like cold turkey because I have heard that there can be like withdrawal symptoms, like the, the baby, like if you've been having caffeine during your pregnancy, the baby can actually suffer withdrawal if you stop caffeine abruptly. So speak to your healthcare provider. If you want to stop caffeine, if you're pregnant or if you are breastfeeding, um, discuss it with your healthcare provider. I know some babies do terrible when their mothers are having caffeine. Um, so if you do want to cut it out, you're going to want to do it like not slowly, but kind of slowly. Um, you're going to want to do it at a, at a pace that will be safe for your baby. Um, if that makes any sense. My third food tip is to eat as much cooked produce and beans, greens, legumes as you possibly can. Um, as far as grains go, assuming that you can have like the greens with the gluten. Um, but assuming you can have whatever you want, um, cooked vegetables and even fruits. Like if you are craving sugar, maybe have like, if you can make a compote or if you can't make it, if you can have somebody make it for you. Um, but try and get as much cooked produce in as possible. It's really soothing on the body to eat like cooked foods in those early postpartum weeks. Um, depending on your body, if you do really well with fresh produce, go for it. Um, I have found after certain pregnancies, I really did not do so well on like fresh salads and stuff. Oh my gosh, I totally craved them, but I just found that they just didn't sit so well with me versus like a cooked, like a, a, a vegetable soup I was totally fine with. Um, so if you find that you can't really do fresh produce after you have your baby, then go ahead and try cooked produce. Like if you want to do fruits and have a compote, um, or vegetables, there's 
like a zillion different kinds of soups that you can have and they're also delicious so enjoy them um, but also like the beans legumes whatever you want to call them um, you can have like lentil soup and slip pea soup and like mushroom barley soup if you can have barley um, there's all kinds of different foods that you can have but try and get a lot of that stuff in it's really good for your milk production if you are breastfeeding um, and it's just really nourishing and good for you for your recovery my fourth food tip which is really a drink tip is and i know you've heard this from everybody a million times that is drink as much as possible and that's really why i like all the soups because it really helps to get all that liquid in um you can also drink tea there's a lot of breastfeeding teas like um, that support like breast milk production um just be cognizant if you have oversupply issues those teas might not be so great for you um so then just drink water or some other healthy drink um but just drink as much as you can and again if you can handle raw fruits and vegetables smoothies are great um but otherwise lots of soups are going to be like your best friend basically because the soups kind of help to get first of all they get the food in so that's really great but they also get a lot of liquid in so that's really super helpful and you can just pay attention to how how hydrated you are first of all if you feel thirsty every time you sit down to nurse make sure that you always have a water bottle near you or something like that make sure you have tea or something like that always with you whenever you're getting ready to sit down and nurse but also like if you're the type of person if your skin gets dry or whatever or your mouth gets dry when you don't drink enough gauge yourself and make sure that you are getting a lot of fluid in. That's gonna be super helpful to you. My final food tip for you is if you are not vegan, try to get animal protein into your diet. If you don't normally tend to um, like go towards animal proteins, try to get it into your diet at least once a day or at least once a week. I personally don't love animal proteins. I'm not vegan or vegetarian or anything, although I've had a lot of healthcare providers ask me if I am. Um, I just really like salads and like fruits and vegetables and produce and like beans, greens, legumes, like those kinds of things. I naturally tend towards that kind of food. Um, but I do find that when I am pregnant and breastfeeding, especially in the early days postpartum, I do find like just a plate of chicken and rice is like a godsend. It is so filling, so nourishing. It's got all those fat soluble vitamins in it. Like there's just so much nutrition um, in those animal proteins um, that are not easily accessible in other foods. Now, again, I still, I still really believe that you should be having lots of, you know, the greens and everything else, like all the other produce and beans and greens and legumes and all that stuff. Um, but the animal product can be super helpful um, if that is something that you are okay with. We're now up to my fourth tip for postpartum moms, which is ultimately do not stress about the nutrients that you are getting into your body. And you're gonna be like, wait, what? <laughs> you just told me all these foods I should eat and not eat and what? Um, okay. Ultimately, I don't want you stressing out. So eat what you can, don't eat what you can't. And that leads me to tip number five, which is get a good vitamin because the postpartum period is very short. It's very temporary. If you're gonna be busy stressing about nutrients and this and that and all these things, it's gonna be too much. Like stress is like the worst thing for you right now, okay? So if you're just gonna eat whatever people give you, anyone who walks in, hands you a plate of food and you're like, great, and you put it in your body, fantastic, okay? You're doing great. But ultimately, do not stress about nutrients, get a good vitamin and take it in addition to whatever else you're eating and just don't stress, just eat. Originally I wrote get a good prenatal vitamin, but what I noticed is that a lot of vitamins combine certain nutrients, certain vitamins that shouldn't be taken together. For example, um, like I noticed that in certain vitamins, I haven't researched every single one, but in certain vitamins, um, there is vitamin E and iron in the same like tablet. Um, and I don't know what the latest research is on it, but what I've read a while ago, like a long time ago, um, was that those two vitamins should not be taken together. I think iron like destroys vitamin E or something like that. They have to be taken like many hours apart. Um, so go ahead, do your research on your vitamins. Don't make yourself crazy though. <laughs> Again, the key here is not to stress out. Okay. I actually don't take a prenatal vitamin when I'm pregnant and postpartum anymore. Um, and that is because what I've noticed about the prenatal vitamins is the vitamins that I am looking to like boost in my own body, the vitamins didn't actually have so much of them in it. Like for example, um, if I wanted a lot of vitamin A and D, and when I say a lot, I don't mean a crazy amount. I just meant a little bit more than what was in the prenatal vitamins. Um, so what I ended up doing was I ended up getting like a really good quality cod liver oil that had high levels of, or not high levels, but just had better levels of vitamins A and D. Um, and the same with B vitamins. I found a really nice B complex. Um, and I felt like when I really need that energy boost, the amount of B vitamins in the prenatals weren't really going to do it for me or they weren't doing it for me. Um, if I took it for a long period of time, if I took my prenatals for a long period of time, when I wasn't freshly postpartum, like when I was getting more sleep, then I was fine. But in those early postpartum days, sometimes you need a little bit more um, of certain vitamins. Um, if your prenatal vitamin is doing it for you, awesome. And that was going to lead on to my next thing of how do you choose a prenatal vitamin? 
ultimately you have to do your own research and decide what works for you. Um, I personally like to choose like an organic food based one. You don't have to. Um, but how do you know if it works for you? Well, take it, <laughs> take it and see how quickly do you normally react to something? Like if you were to have coffee or whatever, how fast would that would, it, would you feel like the energy boost? Like how fast do you normally metabolize things that you eat? So if you would normally feel the effects of something half an hour, an hour, two hours later, so within two hours, whatever your time frame is, you should be feeling a pickup, like a boost, if, if your prenatal vitamin works for you. Um, if you're taking your prenatal vitamin or, or any vitamin, if you're taking your vitamins and you still don't feel the energy boost or you still don't feel better, you still don't feel like as you should, um, you might need to switch vitamins. <laughs> uh, speak to your healthcare provider. They might have a recommendation for you. A lot of midwives can recommend different um, vitamins. Um, I'm sure your doctor can also recommend something. So go ahead, see what their recommendation is, see what works for you. And ultimately it's like trial and error, I feel like. So there you have it. I have thus far shared with you five tips plus a bunch of other things for postpartum moms. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I will see you in my next video with more tips for postpartum moms.